Now I have to remove all of my forensic biological evidence that I have secreted all over this car. Opening Z hood. So, uh, what do you think about this place today? Look at it. It's We're full. super full. Full, full, waiting on parts still. Full, that one's over here hanging out, waiting for the light to come on or not come on after some repairs. There's a truck outside with a trailer on the back of it. We're doing all kinds of stuff around here. We got, uh, got some trailer tires going on that. Waiting on a bunch of special order parts for that. Still waiting on an engine for a van. There's, there's a lot of stuff going down around here. I'm gonna pluck away the easy low hanging fruit and finish up this uh, expedition right here. Is this an expedition? Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, Ford Expedition. I believe it's got the 5.4 in it. Uh, the last on the list of things to do is gonna be a moderate tune up. Dave was working on it earlier with Justin. They threw some front brakes on it, did a full on brake fluid exchange with the BG machine over yonder. And then Dave went to lunch, so I'm gonna take over, knock these spark plugs out, and then we can check one of these cars off the list of things to do. All right, we're kind of getting set up here. I've got some illuminations going. Good day, everybody. Hello, and how are you? As I said it earlier, uh, this is a 2014 Ford Expedition. Uh, she contains the 5.4 liter engine. It's got approximately 90,788.0 miles on the odometer. Uh, like I said, uh, Previously, just a moment ago, a customer had a few things they wanted taken care of, and I'm gonna finish up the uh, the spark plug service uh, on this particular expedition. Now, this uh, this 5.4 motor has this uh, interesting design of spark plug. It's uh, slightly smaller in overall diameter and slightly longer than your average plug. I uh, I don't recall if this is the one where the plugs were breaking off in the heads or not. I, I don't think it is. I think that that problem stopped in the uh, early 2000s. And since this is a later 2000 mod, uh, model, I do not believe that I will have any spark plugs breaking off in the cylinder heads on this particular 5.4. Uh, I hope that uh, what I just said does not come back and bite me in the derriere. But uh, let's go ahead and start tearing into it and uh, we will make that determination uh, very, very shortly. So looks like we've got an easy side and a hard side and i say a hard side because there's an intake in the way it's uh, really of minimal consequence but i've just got to pull this uh intake plumbing and ducting assembly out of the way here and that should give us full access to uh the internals or the well the top side really not really the internals but the top side of this engine and we can pull the uh, ignition coils out once this thing's gone and then dig out the spark plugs after that so Without any further ado, introduction, or explanation, let's go ahead and get started. So, being the four that this is, we're gonna run primarily into eight millimeter and 10 millimeter fasteners here. So we've got our first eight on the clamp for this intake plumbing here. And we just disconnected the mass airflow a moment ago. So this whole unit's gonna go ahead and come free. Set you down on the box. Ooh, shiny red filter, what do we have? Yeah, that looks good. We'll leave that alone. And now we're switching out to our 10 to get this baffle and this little perch business removed that has uh, that goes into the throttle body. So let's lose that evap connector. Looks like we need a 10, 10, 10, and might be another one under there, I think. Yeah, it sure is. That's weird. Well, I'll tell you what, let's just take this baffle off real quick and see if we can get away uh, with uh, just removing that component for easier access into our area over here. Set that guy up there and then I've got some pliers here with little notches in them and those are going to engage on our clamp. You can release that clamp, pull that box out of the way. Nice and easy like. Now what that does is gives me some access to this PCB hose. Let's release the clip right there. And then right here, pull that guy out, set you aside. And now we've got real nice access to our connectors for the coils and the injectors. 
Now, I realize I'm not putting fuel injectors in this, but I am going to disconnect the fuel injector connectors in order to get more wiggle room here for our, uh, for the harness to come out of the way. Pull that guy up and out. And I'll disconnect the harness from uh, its little brackets as much as I can. That should give me plenty of access to dig those uh, spark plugs and coils out. Now with the coils, I think we're looking for, it's gonna be a 9 30 seconds inch to go over the bolts to hold down the coils. Uh, it's, all, it's a metric fastener, but 9 30 seconds also fits. I think it's a five and a half mil or something. I'm not gonna bother doing the conversion. We pull these little bolts right out. Don't lose them, they're hard to replace. I'm gonna stick those right up there. Notice I'm doing what I perceived to be the hard side first. That way, as soon as I get over the hump on this side, it's smooth sailing and all the difficult work would have already been completed. That's a good mental motivator in my guesstimation. Here, we'll try that with a wobbly bit. Spring-loaded wobblies. Boing. See if I can get down in there. It's kind of far away. There you go. It's gonna be clever. I perceived that I was being clever. I thought that was clever. Come out, coil. Oh, stop. Oh, rubber boots got her kind of stuck in there. Ha. Ah. Ooh, these are brown boot coils. I wonder if these are the breaker offers. Hmm. I don't know if it's the brown boots or the black boots that do it. Yeah, that's a brown boot. You know what? I'm gonna phone a friend on this. Hang on a second. We're gonna call Bearded Ford Tech on a voice call or a video, video voice call. Do, 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 do. Are we ringing? <laughs> it's not ringing. Pick up. Ah, uh, what up, man? Redacted service truck. I'm making a YouTube video with you inside of it. Hey, listen, I, I got a question for you on your Ford expertise. So I've got this, uh, I got this expedition here with a five four. A guy wants some spark plugs but I pulled out the brown boot coils. Are these the ones where the coils break or the plugs break off in the head? No, the black boots. Okay, oh, so the black boots are the breaker offers and then the brown boots are fine, right? Yeah. Okay, cool, got it. Yeah, I wanted to make sure before I just decided to pull these spark plugs out and then break them off in the cylinder head because that would be unfortunate. Oh, yeah, can you see it? That's the good one? All right, cool. Go. That's what I thought. Okay, that's all we needed to know. I'm gonna hang up on you and go back to work. See you guys later. And that gentleman is the bearded Ford tech. He knows his stuff, check out his channel. I'll plug his link to his channel down inside this video's description below. Shameless self-promotion for my friends. Woohoo! All righty, so we've got the 14 millimeter spark plug socket. Uh, not the normal 5.8 spark plug socket because this has really weird spark plugs in it. But I don't care, they do the same thing. So let's pull this guy out. We'll do the whole bank on this side, then we'll go over and uh, do the whole bank on the other side. Let's see what these 90K plugs are looking like in here. And the survey says, they're not horrible. 
Motorcraft Platinums, same part number, 24 FP, or HJFS 24 FP, correction. Comparing them with the replacement. I can see some wear, the actual spark wear on the gap itself, that's interesting. Yeah, it's a, it's a tiny microbial, microbial amount, but I can see it in there. Okay, good enough for me. Let's take our new one, set it up, drop her down in the hole there. Not applying torque, we're just gonna run the threads down. Clicks. Let's get those remainders removed. Oh, by the way, what's the uh, summertime heat check for you guys? Today, where I'm at, it's 89.2 uh, in the shade, 70% humidity. Me hot. Yeah, not as bad as last week, but it's a little warm. I understand there's sections of the country, of the United States country, uh, experiencing a heat wave right now, especially up north. I heard in North Carolina land, that one's got some wear to it. I heard up in North Carolina, it was like 102 with like a real feel of 117 at something similar farther up north. But then at the same time, I heard that our friends across the pond in uh, jolly old England were flipping their lids over a heat wave and they were complaining because it was like 78 degrees on the Fahrenheit scale. Uh, which, I, what does that translate to, like 30 degrees in uh, Celsius? Now I'm sorry, but 78 is like premium temperature. I don't, I don't know why you guys think that's hot. Regardless, everybody's perception on the current weather situation is warm and heat and all that good stuff. So uh, yeah, comment down below. Uh, where are your temperatures at in your local region? Something fell out of that. Oh, look, I found it. It was the little thread protector that goes on there. Okay, so we got three, the remaining three removed. By the way, I blow all this stuff out with a compressed uh, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and uh, various other gases. And I did that when you guys weren't looking, but I did blow all the dirt out of these uh, spark plug holes and off the top of the cylinder heads. That way, you guys don't need to free about doing it wrong. I'm not getting stuff down in the holes, guys, don't worry. I've done this once before, just once. Okay, this is number four. All the way out back. Slide you down in there. Now it's tempting to just stick the tool in there and just kind of set in this thing, but you always, I, I say always, I'm guilty of it, but you should always start your threads by hand. And I know I don't always do that, but. It's one of those, uh, I, I got kids, so it's like, do as I say, not as I do. Yeah, but for real though, you really should never start fasteners by a by power tool. That pinched my finger. And you shouldn't finish fasteners by a power tool either. It's just not the way. That one's tight. Bottomed out, rather. Those are all bottomed out. Let me get a clicky wrench. We'll apply some torque action to these units and then we'll go over and hit the other side. But first, I need to go ahead and look up my torque spec here. Let's find out what we're working with. It's a 14, a 2014. And we're going down to Ford truck, Freightliner truck, sure. Yeah, for, it's funny, I got Freightliners in here, but I don't have uh, 1977 Corvettes in here. Weird, huh? Expedition, we're just gonna call it two-wheel drive for the 5.4. Specified specifications, we want mechanical specified specifications. And we're gonna scroll on down to the S section, spark plugs, torque, and torque for the spark plugs is 106 inch pounds of torque or 12 Newton meters. Let's get after it. 
All righty, gravity of the flash. Seriously? Cut. I'm gonna try it again. There, flashlight ends. We can see. Got the dude. Got the quarter inch. Um, uh, torque wrench, I almost said impact, set up for 106 inch pounds with the quarter to three eighths adapter. Get that snapped together. That one I was, I'm over, let me back it off. There we go. I'm probably over on all of them, to tell you the truth. We'll just back them off and try again. See that? That one's good. All right, let's go a little further back in there and get that last one. Click achieved. Got it. Okay, those guys are all nice and torqued like. So now we can take our coils, reapply some dielectric grease to the uh, the business end of our coil, we'll get these guys dropped back down in the cylinder head. Uh, oh. Camera moved. Okay, so I'm taking all my ignition coils here. I'll wipe that business out. That's old dielectric that's dried, dried up. It's dried. Dried and dried. So what we'll do is we'll take our, uh, our CRC dielectric lubricant here, stick that down in the hole, give it a squeeze on the business end, and it's going to inject the schmoo. Right down inside of there, you guys see that? Give it a good squirt. Don't do too much, it'll just overflow and it'll just kind of like splooge out everywhere. Kind of like that. Too much. I did that for demonstration purposes only. Anyway, so we got some dielectric lubricant inside of the spark plug boots. Now, this will not help the electrons pass from the coil to the spark plug. What that will do is prevent moisture from contaminating that area thus uh keeping the area clean and clear and free and that'll prevent spark leakage outside of the boot because we've got to direct all of that ignition energy all of those electrons through the coil through the boot and into the plug and ultimately into the combustion chamber and if the spark is leaking out then it won't make it to the chamber and then we will have uh poor combustion and that would be bad okay so got all four of the plugs in all four of the boots in let me drop in all of our little fasteners here oh, that one's far away i cannot reach i mean i got some long arms here but even that has its limitations on occasion can't find the hole Feeling around. Come here. Maybe just so I can see it. There we go. Got that screwed in nice like. So we will take not the 10, need the 8 mil or the 5 16 was it? That one. There it is. Need the other extension. Take this guy and run down all these fasteners here with the electron ratchet other way turn there we go I'm not gonna check torque spec on these little guys we tighten them down until they stop and then they're good and if you strip those out you ultimately end up breaking the valve cover and have to replace the valve cover, which is not fun. It's not the end of the world. Flashlight. Dorman uh, makes replacement valve covers for these. So it's not the end of the world, but it's also not fun and not particularly inexpensive either. Get that last one in. Nice and tight like. Good. So we may now just systematically go down the line and reconnect all these components. Injectors. 
that injector. That one in. Excellent. Now the PCV can snap you back on over the valve cover. This side is good to go. Let us move on over and we'll knock out this other side real quick like. All right, getting geared up for the passenger side. Uh, first thing to note is it's getting warmer over here. Uh, 92.3 is the new temperature. Uh, probably because we are uh, in an area of limited airflow. Anyway, we're gonna repeat the same procedure here. Reaching through these heater core hoses, which I'm glad they're not super hot, because that would suck. Go in there and get everybody disconnected. Pull that one out of the way. Actually, you know, I'm gonna retract my my comments from earlier, this is the hard side. I don't like this side. Here's another wire back there for a injector. And then the last coil wire. That's fun. The connector's pointed away from us. There we go. Cool, got it. All right, let's get these coils out of here. Ring, ring. Let's pull these guys out. Two. Now, last one, third one, she's down there a little ways. And number four. Excellent. Okay, here she comes. That's coil four in the back. It made the pop. Three makes the pop. One makes the pop. And second one, can't even get to it. It'll make the pop too, don't worry. Plop. Beautiful. Alrighty. Here, since 22.1% of you did not believe that I blow this out, I'll blow it out. Loud noises. Nice and blown out. All righty, electron ratchet coming in. Let's get another extension on there, I think. Why does this not want to meet the plug? There we go. Little rubber dealio was holding me up. There's a rubber insert inside of those spark plug sockets and it was not sliding over the plug. Similar condition as the others. A little bit of wear on there. Slight discoloration. New one, inserting. Move, 
harness. There we go. Seriously? Got it. See, this is how we keep any uh, foreign objects or FOD, foreign object debris, from entering the engine. We just fill those holes right after we uh, open them up. That way, nothing unwanted can go in there. Let's dig that third one out. Got it. This is plug number seven overall. Sneak that guy down in there. So the presence of these wiring harnesses here, they're interfering with the straight line of the uh, extension. And that's one of those little factors that can contribute to an accidental cross thread. That one's bottomed out. Take the extension off for clearance. Drop that one in. I still got a good straight line shot on it. If maneuvered correctly here. Neutral drop. Aha, got it. There's that last little one. Beautiful. Let's take this one, pull it out, stick that in there. Let's get it threaded up. I feel it. Good. Let's run the threads down. And torque wrench time. Right there, she's torqued. Moving up to the next unit. That one's a, uh, I can use the extension on that one. A little bit more clearance here to mess with. Ah, there's sweat in my eye. For real, look, it's like, like right there in the corner of my eye. I can't, can't see anything. That burns. It puts the perspiration in its eye off of its skin. That one's not bottomed out yet. It's fine. Next achieved. Tools are stuck. And this one's also not bottomed out yet, but that is fine. Everything's fine. Nothing is not fine. Even things that are not fine can be made fine, so they're fine. Everything's fine. Woohoo! Okay, so we've got all the plugs in. Let's get our coils and our lubricant here. There's all four. That's the whole set. Where's my uh, bottle of lube at? I need uh, need some squirt action. Where'd it go? Ah! behind me look man look i got some leakage going on from the bottle a little bit of overflow spillage there on the on the tip uh oh 
get that in there begin injection beautiful that's kind of too much a little bit sloppy i like my squirts kind of sloppy here let's start getting these guys back down where they came from i didn't necessarily pay much attention to the order in which these came out it's fairly inconsequential if they don't go in the same hole that they came out of so i didn't bother utilizing the brain power to keep those in order i could have or i could have numbered them but it's really not entirely necessary in this particular engine's configuration stick that one down in there Okay, those guys are in. Let's get the four bolts here. We'll drop those bolts down in and thread them up. That one out back. Yeah, some of the older Fords, you actually have to remove the uh, ECM to get any kind of access into here. And you've kind of, you have to reach under all this stuff to get to that rear plug. It's, it's a real bear in the older Model 5 Fours. Not the, the most pleasant of endeavors, I can tell you that. So here, let's go ahead and retool this guy. that third one at uh, that sweat's going back into my eyeball again there it is that was a tough one to get a hold of uh oh I lost my socket give that back to me get everybody plugged back in and then we'll throw the uh, intake ducting back together uh, look at that I'm missing a coil smart plug fuel injector here's a fuel injector wire that's I'm stumbling on my words I'm not even thinking about talking to you guys I'm just uh, getting through this waiting for the moment when I can go get some more ice water there we go that one in that one and four injectors four coils one harness this side's good to go sweet let's get our air box and whatnot back in and then we'll put the uh intake tubing back together so slide that guy in there's our 10 socket uh fastener not socket i was looking at the socket when i said that words tight and then up top the clamp is still unclamped there we go got that guy so now back it up again Four little tabs to have to slide into the box. It's got to go at that weird sharp angle. Uh, mass airflow wire just below, right here. Plug that in. Excellent. All right. Assembly complete. Let's run back into the cabin clean all these goodies up not in that order 
and fire this thing up after after I fix something I forgot. Look right here. No, no, no. We've got a vacuum leak, a big one. There we go. Okay, cleaned up, lubed up, protected on the battery. Toys and tools are out of the way. Let's put this stuff over here in the bench. And we may now begin engine starting sequence. Here, you guys stay here, watch the motor. I'll hit the key. Woo. Well, I'm not like gonna hit the key, that would break it. But uh, I will turn the key. Now I have to remove all of my forensic biological evidence that I have secreted all over this car. There we go. Clean up my secretions. That was a good one there. And I do believe at this point, this 5.4 Ford motor is good to go. That will conclude the extent of my repairs for the day on this particular Ford Expedition. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close this one out, guys. As always, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for watching this video. Let me know what you think about this process uh, in the comment section down below. Uh, let me know again about the heat wave you're experiencing in your sector of the planet at this current point in time. And most importantly, before I go, I'd like to remind each and every one of you to not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later in a video, in a Ford Expedition, in a 5.4 liter tune-up, end of transmission.